Coming up on this week's Gadget Show Web TV, John's looking at the brand new MacBook Air. Otis checks out the Rubik's Cube app, and I bring you this week's best tech news. Hello and welcome to this week's Web TV. Coming up, Otis attempts to solve a Rubik's Cube on his iPhone. But first, John's been getting up close and personal with the brand new MacBook Air from Apple. Now at just 11 inches, it's the closest Apple has ever come to creating a netbook. But at £850, is it really worth it? With their increasing market share and burgeoning commercial success, it seems Apple are exploring new niches in the market. With the launch of the new MacBook Airs, there is a 13.3-inch screen ultra-portable model that's more or less a direct replacement for the old one, but there's also a new, smaller Air with an 11.6-inch screen that's almost like a luxury netbook. It's very elegant in appearance with a very slim profile and it's very light too at just over a kilogram. It also opens up to reveal a very high quality screen, 1366 by 768 pixels of resolution. Apple's unibody aluminium construction really gives it a very solid feel in spite of its light weight. It really does inspire confidence. One of the reasons for the impressive thinness is that Apple have abandoned traditional spinning hard disks and fitted the Air with solid state memory, and they've soldered it directly onto the motherboard rather than putting it in a separate case. They've also distributed the batteries around the chassis, rather like they've done on the iPad. Now, one of the advantages of solid state memory, in fact the main one, is that it makes the machine quite a bit quicker to start up. From scratch, it's about 13 seconds to boot, or after you've left the air for an hour, it'll go automatically into standby and stay there for up to a month, from which it'll recover almost instantaneously into full working mode. Now, the basic model has just 64 gigabytes of solid state memory. This is a slightly premium one that comes with 128 gigabytes and costs just under a thousand pounds. You get a good sized keyboard and a good sized glass trackpad. In fact, they're nearly as big as the ones on the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Although I was disappointed, and I think quite a few users of the old MacBook Air were disappointed to see that the keys aren't back illuminated. Now, obviously, and traditionally, with a MacBook Air, you'd expect to have to make a few compromises, and this is no exception. Some are entirely reasonable. I mean, I don't think you would expect it to come with a built-in optical drive, and uh, rather thoughtfully, they've included the backup software on this tiny USB disk. I'm also not worried by the fact I've only got two USB sockets, at least that's one up on the old MacBook Air. Other compromises, though, are more irksome. I'm particularly annoyed that there isn't an SD card slot, although you do get one on the 13.3 inch Air. Um, and I'm also annoyed that there's no Ethernet socket. Apple will sell you an adapter that'll convert Ethernet into USB, but um, it would be annoying to have to carry it around along with the card reader and possibly also the display port to a DVI or VGA adapter, which uh, will help you cope with eventualities you may encounter in the field. Perhaps the biggest compromise overall you have to make, though, is in terms of processing power. Apple have gone for relatively low-power versions of the relatively old dual-core chips. This model has a 1.4 GHz dual-core processor. You can get a 1.6 GHz as an option. But it all means that whilst it's massively more brisk than your average netbook, it struggles to cope with certain tasks. For example, HD video playback. It manages to play back Apple-friendly files, like the QuickTime ones you get out of a Canon high-definition digital SLR, but I found it struggled to play 1080i camcorder footage from some cameras back at all. And if it won't play it back, I don't see much chance that you'll be able to edit it in the newly revised iLife suite. Battery life is fairly good. They claim around five hours, and I found I wasn't quite getting that, but I did have my brightness turned up to maximum. Overall, then, the MacBook Air is very much a luxury product and one that involves a few compromises, but I do rather like it. It's the first MacBook Air I've actually felt the desire to own, although if I did own one, I still think I'd end up carrying around a bag full of accessories.
Right, news time now, and first up, Creative has announced the arrival of its latest MP3 player, the Android-toting Creative Zen Touch 2. The Zen Touch 2 was announced alongside the company's Zio Android tablet and uses Android 2.1 to power the operating system. It bears some similarities to the iPhone and features GPS, Bluetooth and accelerometer, FM radio, a micro SD card slot, web browsing and a 2 megapixel camera, but sadly, it doesn't feature 3G connectivity. Currently it's due for UK release in December with prices starting at around £149 for an 8GB model and rising to around £159 for an 8GB model with GPS or 16GB without. Right, next up, the PSP2 exists and EA has had access to it according to a slip-up from EA's Vice President Patrick Soderlund. Rumours of the tech included in Sony's new handheld device have been floating around for ages, some even going as far as saying it will rival the Xbox 360's power. However, before this, no one even admitted it existed. And when Patrick was asked about his expectations for the new console, he commented, we can't talk about it because of our relationship with Sony. But even so, it's exciting news that a brand new handheld console from Sony could be on its way. And we'll be sure to let you know much more about it as soon as we do. One of the most popular toys from the 80s was the Rubik's Cube. But as soon as tech such as games consoles came into fashion, it seemed to die off. Well, it now looks set to be brought well and truly into the 21st century with the aid of the official app. So, as soon as we downloaded it, we passed it on to Otis to see if he could actually solve it. Now, some of you may remember the frustratingly popular Rubik's Cube from the 80s, a toy which ruined many teenagers' lives, but went on to become the biggest selling toy of all time. I'm quite surprised at how long it's taken for an officially endorsed app to appear, but it is available on the iPhone. You can choose to play a simplified version like that. You can play the original version, which has nine cubes per face, or you can go even more complicated than that. So you can choose to play in 2D. You rotate each side like that. And as an added bonus, you can select a 3D function. Pick your um, shades, retro shades, of course, uh, red and cyan, red and green, or red and blue. And then you can play it and it looks as though it's actually floating away from your phone. Also, there's a solver function here that allows you to represent a cube that you've got in front of you um, and how the colours were arranged on each face. Or, better still, you can take a photograph of it uh, and then it will show you step by step how to solve that cube. That's, if you're like me, you've become incredibly frustrated and you spend at least three hours trying to solve the darn thing. It's actually quite engaging, just as frustratingly difficult because I confess I never actually solved it back in the 80s or the 90s. And I think this is actually a really good representation of the original game and it's available as an app for only 179, which is actually quite a small investment for something that's this good. Well, that's all we've got time for this week, but I'll be back at the same time next week with more news and reviews. The main show is on your screens this Monday night at 8 on 5, and this week, Jason and Susie have the challenge of a musical nature, where they must perform their own versions of the gadget show theme tune, equipped with only technology. Susie must only use unusual gadget instruments, while Jason has to create musical instruments out of toys. It's definitely an interesting one, so make sure you don't miss it. But from me here at Web TV, it's bye for now.